فاصبر صبرا جميلا Khairin inshallah Al-Nawi rahim Allah ta'ala he says here فيها تصريح عن افتتاح نافلة بعد إقامة الصلاة سواء كانت راتبة كسنة الصبح وظهر والعصر أو غيرها أو وغير أو غيرها وهذا مذهب الشافعي والجمهور وقال أبو هنيفة وصحبه إذا كان صلى ركعتي سنة الصبح صلىهما بعد الإقامة في المسجد ما لم يخشى فوت الركعة الثانية وقال الثوري ما لم يخشى فوت الركعة الأولى وقال طائفة يصليهما خارج المسجد ولا يصليهما بعد إقامة أو بعد الإقامة في المسجد طيب it says here a Nawi says that the narration of Abu Huraira that's not in Bukhari Muslim only in Sahih Muslim it clearly proves that it is prohibited to begin a recommended voluntary prayer after the mandatory prayer has been established. It's prohibited to begin a prayer, which is nafila, after the maktuba has been established. Now, this istanbal here, this deduction and this reasoning extracting from the hadith is not necessarily 100% accurate. And that's because... Does the hadith say, don't start a prayer, do not begin a prayer? Or does the hadith say, fala salata, there is no prayer. And there's a difference between the two. I was offering the two rak'ah for salat al-fajr, right? And in the beginning or in the middle of the first rak'ah, or as I made ruku', or as I started the second rak'ah, the what? The iqama was made. The what? The iqama was made for fajr. I'm praying the Sunnah of Fajr. Based off of what Noah said, it's only prohibited to do what? To start and not continue. To start. He says, iftitah, to begin prayers. But if I'm already making those prayers, then I don't necessarily have to salam out. Everybody clear this? Everybody understand this? Scenario number two is when a person is uh, not making the salah, the iqamah is made for salat al-fajr, and then a person makes the takbir. And he begins his nafila after the maktuba has been established. That's what Anoui says. He says, aniftitahi, opening up a recommended prayer after the mandatory prayer has been established. But does that hadith mean that or say that? And is that the plausible thing? In most cases, in most cases, a person is going to get caught after the iqama was made. He said, oh, the, the iqama is in 10 minutes, I have a couple of time, or oh, 5 minutes, 2 minutes, I have a couple of minutes to make my sunnahs really quick. And then the iqama is made. But in most cases, as Allah knows best, how much sense would it make for a person to hear the iqama and then do what? That's not, that's not that plausible. That's not what? That's not that plausible. Everyone understand this? And there's a reason why he made that wording like that, as we said. And Allah surely knows best, huh? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tayyip. I know Ibrahim al Ta'ala, he says that you cannot make these voluntary prayers after the iqamah has been made, regardless of whatever prayer it is. The ratib are prayers, and the sunnah and rawatib are the prayers that do what? Sunnah and rawatib are the prayers that are attached to the five daily prayers. The two before Fajr, if you miss them before Fajr, you make them after Fajr. Naam. The two before Dhuhr, four before Dhuhr, two after Dhuhr, etc. Those are called As-Sunan Ar-Rawatib. As-Sunan Ar-Rawatib. They are not normal Sunnah prayers. They're not normal Nafila prayers. They have a special virtue. They have a special time. And oftentimes there are special rulings to those prayers with regards to making them up. With regards to what? Making them up. Are we understand this? Or making them after Salat al Asr. Or making them after Salat al Fajr. 
And when I understand this, or making them before Salat al Dhuhr. And when it's not, or when you're not supposed to pray. Are we understand this? That's not the same as a naflul mutlaq, a sunnatul mutlaqa. The normal voluntary recommended prayer that you can make however you want to, you're not supposed to make it after Asr, before Maghrib. You're not supposed to make it before it's time for the zawal. Are we going understand this? You're not supposed to make those voluntary prayers after Salat al-Fajr until 15 minutes after the sun has risen. Are we going understand the difference here? There's a difference between the two. So the ratib prayer is included in that to sabab. That to sabab. Tight, moving forward. I know he says it's prohibited no matter what the prayer is. Tayyip, he says, and this is the view, this is the school of Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah. And most of the fuqaha, most of the ulama, they hold that view, that that's prohibited. As far as Abu Hanifa rahimahullah and his students, huh, his disciples, Hanafi disciples, right? Huh? Huh? His students, he says that if a person is making uh, the two raka of Salat al-Fajr, then he can make them after the iqamah as long as he's sure that he'll catch at least the second raka. As long as he's not afraid that he'll miss the second raka. Meaning he knows for sure, he's pre-estimated, I'm going to miss the what? But for sure I'll catch the what? The second. He says if a person can do that, then labas. It's nothing wrong with that. Athodi, meaning Sufyan Athodi. Sufyan Athodi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he had a madhab. He had students, he had disciples, he had uh, his own views. He said, as long as a person isn't afraid of missing the first rak'ah. So the difference between Athori and Abu Hanifa, and they're both from the Kufa, they have the concept of what? The concept of missing a part of the mandatory prayer. Sufyan Athori, he said that he has to catch the first rak'ah of the mandatory prayer. And Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, he said, no, he must catch the what? At least. At least the what? The second and last rak'ah. The second and last rak'ah. Uh, a third group, they say, that a person can make these two rak'ah, the rak'ah fajr, outside of the masjid. And not to make them after the iqamah in the masjid. These are, this goes to show the different dynamics of what? Of fiqh. And the wide world of fiqh. And that it is, it is not and it has never been a narrow-minded, dogmatic window, as the people have made it today. When you understand this, this is what Fulan says, Kalas. This is what Sheikh Fulan says, what? That's it. This is what my Imam says, and that's it. And anything else, everything else is bid'ah, is haram, is misguidance. La. Fiqh was never like this. Everyone you understand this? It's deep. There are ins and there are outs. You pick your view, you pick your opinion based off of the proofs and evidences. Based off of the qawaid, the usul, the principles, the maxims, based off of the Arabic language, based off of this, based off of the athar of sahaba, you pick your view and you stick to it. And you call others to that if you feel that's correct. And you simplify things for the layman Muslim, but you do not be a bigot. You do not become a bigot. You do not force it upon others and disrespect people that came before you and had their views in which they, want not, they didn't want to go against the sunnah and disrespect the sunnah. But it was an issue of understanding the sunnah, implementing the sunnah, and taking all the hadiths, or them not having all the hadiths. Whatever the reason is. Everyone understand this? Tight, moving forward. So that's the narration of Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Uh, 